<laughs> I think they're ready. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you in the house of our Lord. This is the fifth Sunday of Easter, a great celebration. Easter Sundays take us all the way uh, to the celebration of Pentecost and just a great time in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so good to see you gathered here in worship, and uh, we're going to uh, have our worship team lead us and the lighting of the candles on the chancel area. I don't see any alkalites, so I'm going to light those myself. Uh, let's be in prayer for Ingrid's family. They usually do the alkalites, and uh, I think that she was under the weather, and so we're going to miss that. We're hoping to set that whole program back up where maybe some of the other young people might be in involved uh, in the future for that. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Let's all stand together as our worship team leads us. Stand before the throne. 
Amen. The clap offering. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Worship team, thank you. Thank you, Brother Frank. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise and glory. We will someday, all of us, face the judgment seat of Christ, stand faultless before the throne because of what you have done, Jesus. And we worship you and praise you and adore your holy, marvelous, wonderful name, King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we are in Communion Sunday. We pray that your Holy Spirit will bring us to the altar here in a few moments as we receive the Holy Sacrament. Bless us now as only you can. And may all of God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. Any children with us today? Do we have any little ones that I can bullywink bullfrog with you? I know you've heard of the three R's. I've got a new definition of that. Reading, writing, and ribbiting. How's that sound? Reading, writing, and ribbiting. Good to see all of you here. Well, we got to put our hands up in the air and say, long, long, long time ago, in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River, Reverend Bullywink Bullfrog, you remember what a bullfrog says? Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Well, Bullywink Bullfrog was singing with the four froggy quartet that made him a quintet. And they were singing a Bible verse that Bullywink was teaching on. 1 John 4, 7, and 8. It goes like this. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7 and 8. Oh, they sounded so good. But while they were singing, one of the froggies said, you're singing too loud. And then another froggy said, but you're singing too high. The other one said, you're singing too low. And they were really arguing with each other. And Bullywing said, wait, 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 wait. He said, are we even listening to what we're saying or singing? God is love and we're to love each other. Other. And what does that mean? Well, one of the frogs said, well, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. So all of the froggies went like this. Can y'all do that with me? Congregation, can you do that? Those of you that your neck turns, turn your cheek. Can you do that? How does that mean love? What does that mean? Jesus said, if you love your neighbor, turn the other cheek. I think it means that if somebody says something mean to you, you don't turn around and immediately say something mean back to them. Then one of the other froggies said, Jesus said, we need to go the extra mile. Well, how does that mean love? Any idea? Go an extra mile? I don't know. I think maybe it means if somebody needs help, that you ought to help them and then even say, do you need any more help? Maybe that's what it means there. And then finally, Jesus said, to love others, we need to forgive them. That's where it gets difficult. I mean, if somebody steals something, if you were here last week, I talked about the toast that I made when I was your age and put jelly in all the cracks there. And then right as I was about to eat it, my sister ate it. And I've been struggling ever since then, forgiving her for eating my toast. I'm working on it, but I haven't stole her toast. So that's one of the ways I haven't forgiven her. Anybody ever steal somebody's toast? You ever done that? Well, good for you. Good for you. So then all the critters begin to sing again. Can y'all sing that with me in closing? Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not... Knoweth not God, for God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7 and 8. Woo, I like your style there. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, help us to love others as you love us. In your name we pray. Amen. Danasia, can you take the froggy there? All right. Who's going to do our announcements this morning? Miss Ashley, please come. Thank you, guys. Susan, thank you. Thank you, Matthew, as well, helping us out. Matthew's one of our exciting Boy Scouts as well. Matthew, I'm going to mention to him about the ball game last week that y'all... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Ashley. I'm actually going to speak about that ball game, too. All right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome this morning. Do we have any first-time visitors here with us who hasn't uh, visited with us here before? I don't see anyone, unless anyone's being shy, I don't see any hands going up, but welcome everyone here this morning. We're happy to have you. We did have a very exciting ball game last Sunday. Um, the church did win nine to eight over the scouts. 
uh, I encourage you, um, even if you don't play, to come out. I, I think something's brewing for May, maybe another game. That pastor will announce the date soon, but it was a great time. Just come out and watch, and um, a lot of people had their tents for shade um, that you could sit under and watch, and it was great. I also wanted to share, I don't know if you guys know, we actually have a Major League Baseball star that goes to our church. Um, his name is Bobby, right back here, man of many talents. Um, he actually caught a ball with his opposing hand, not his gloved hand, but his other hand, about 55 miles an hour coming right at him. So yes. it was very graceful, very <laughs> graceful. So definitely get his autograph, uh, you know, before you leave. Already, I know he already has endorsements coming this week, so um, good for him. Um, so in your bulletin, if everyone caught one on the way in, um, there's actually a, a something new this week. Uh, there's a, a memorization Bible verse here for you to hold on to for the week. Um, and the verse is going to start with A and then each week proceed through the alphabet. So next week will be B. So it's just nice to maybe use in your weekly devotion. And then also right next to it is like a thought, like a nice thought to think about and, you know, reflect on during the week. So um, another reason to pick these up, very important. I know prior to the pandemic, you know, these were larger and, you know, we had more going on in it, but it is out on the table out there for you to pick up individually. So do that. Um, of course, the weekly calendar of events is also on the other side. So it makes it really nice. Um, Monday at 11 a.m. is a communion stewards meeting in the sanctuary. So if you're a part of that, um, please make effort to attend. Tuesday at 6 is a trustees meeting in the youth building. Um, starting this week, Pastor Eddie is starting two new groups um, from 4.30 to 5 on Thursdays, and it's going to be for the month of May and June. One is for the women and one is for the men. So if you wanted to come out and try something different, it does start this week. There is a sign-up sheet um, just to have an idea about how many will come out on Thursday. So if you get a chance to sign up, if you don't, it's okay. Um, but if you do get a chance to sign up, it kind of gives them a heads up how many people will be there. This Thursday at 630, 630 will be a drive-in church service, and it's sponsored by Lighthouse uh, Baptist Church. And it's in honor of the National uh, Day for Christians United in Christ. So there is more information and directions on how to get to that church at the Welcome Center if you guys wanted to um, attend that service. And Saturday in the Friendship Hall, the Scouts will be holding their Pinewood Derby at 2 o'clock. It's, it's really exciting. I know they've been working hard on that. Um, so you can come out and cheer them on, and um, it'll be nice to, to see everyone's smiling faces out there. And, of course, Wednesday night, um, continuing with the youth and the kids and the Adam and Eve class. So um, we're happy to have all the kiddos that would love to come out and all the youth. Um, we're having a really uh, great time on Wednesday night. So miss anything? Okay. Something that's in your uh, bulletin, and as Ashley said, I hope everybody picked up one or when you leave, if you will, there, um, we just started back this Sunday, the altar flowers. That's something I forgot to send uh, the information out to, to announce that if you want to sign up, you can start doing that again. We had trouble finding a florist. Most of them went out of business. Isn't that terrible? Um, so we did find a connection, and so we do have the opportunity once again. A lot of folks in memory and honor like to put flowers, uh, fresh-cut flowers, each Sunday. So you can sign up. There's a book back there uh, at the Welcome Center. Um, we are looking at, uh, just in a couple more weeks, if uh, we're waiting on the scouts tomorrow night to decide if they can pull together another Sunday before it gets too hot, a ball game, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. So, Ashley, thank you for that great announcement. That was just wonderful. It was just a lot of fun, and we're looking forward to doing that again. John, if you can come at this time to read our scriptures for us, if you will, brother. Morning. Good morning. Today's scripture reading comes from 1 John 4, 7 through 12. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, 
If God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. If you'll take that bulletin now, the uh, one sheet that we have, and turn over, we have our prayer concerns. And that's where we've listed the uh, Bible verse and the thought for the day. And we're actually going to end the message with those. So you might want to keep that in your uh, lap there. Uh, For our prayer concerns, uh, we're very excited. Ben Rankin, one of our Boy Scouts, uh, working on his Eagle Project, uh, has put up a cross at the welcome of the prayer garden right by the angel. The angel was given uh, by Joey Weisbaum, and it's in her memory. She uh, used to be our parish nurse. What a great lady. I know she's just rejoicing in heaven. We miss her terribly, and that beautiful angel just reminds us of all the ministries that she gave us. And right beside it uh, is a cross, and uh, the scouts have been working out there, putting some plants around it. And it's in honor and memory of Alex Kozlov. And there's already been donations given in his name, uh, Kozlov, for some of the kids to go to summer camp. Summer camp meant the world to him. So uh, we begin our prayer moment here with just remembering that dear family. And we will uh, have a moment to honor that uh, in the future. And Ben is finishing up all that he has uh, to get that for his Eagle Scout project. And it just means the world to all of us. As you're looking at the prayer concerns, Scott and Marcia Skelton, Marcia's still recovering from surgery, and she asked last week that we pray for her daughter, Amy Cook. Um, she was in the Inverness Hospital. They let me go in and pray with the family, and she is back home now doing much better. Uh, Jim Lofton was in the ER. He is back home and uh, recovering, struggling with the kidney stones and UTI. Uh, So continue to keep him in your prayers and mentioning the kidney stones. Continue to remember our own Lori. She was back on the keyboard today. She'll be playing the piano at our 11 o'clock service uh, as she moves forward for healing, struggling with the kidney stones as well. Irene Brew is with us today. We've been praying for her brother who had quadruple bypass uh, this week. And also, uh, his name is Richard, if you're penciling in the names. Also, uh, her dear sister's granddaughter uh, that we all been praying for uh, went into heaven this uh, earlier uh, in the week or last week. And so we just pray for that entire family. Uh, Irene has had a lot of losses over the year of the pandemic and so as many others. So we just pray for her. Uh, We pray for Bob Patria. Bob may be with us today. He has knee replacement coming up this week. Uh, Rick Ducharme in our church, his brother, uh, really struggling with cancer. We're going to try to reach out from the church uh, and and go down and see his brother. And so we pray he lives down um, about a couple hours south of here. So let's be in prayer for their dear family. Bill Perry's not with us today. Bill has been helping some in the sound booth, as you know. Uh, Bill and Becky, and they're working with the youth. Um, Bill's mother had a stroke, so they drove 16 hours straight uh, to New York, and uh, Bill is the oldest child. So they're having to take care of all the things up there. And, and Becky did say that, that the mother was a little bit better. So that was good news uh, as well. Just talked to Beverly Snyder. She's here with us today, Beverly and Monty. We need to keep them both in our prayers. But Beverly's prayer was her son, Michael. Uh, Michael's going to have surgery um, today, I think you said, uh, Beverly, uh, for a colostomy. And he lives in California. So if you can uh, pencil in Michael's name, and we trust God's healing grace and his amazing touch in the family and peace in Beverly's heart as well. Can you say amen? Man, and many of you gathered uh, with us uh, yesterday for the Wesley Covenant Association's uh, fifth global gathering. And uh, we praise the Lord for those that were behind the scenes. Um, uh, Bill and Kathy, Kathy, I know is here. I'm not sure if Bill's at this service, but they did. Uh, they were in the kitchen and we had fried chicken. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was great. And uh, really was very educational. And in the next couple of weeks, you will hear more about that. You can pick up any of the wonderful messages and the reports online here very soon. Elizabeth's back with us. Elizabeth is a representative there and uh, just is outstanding in ministry to the global Methodist church as well as our church right here. Uh, But uh, there was a lot of updates of what's happening around different annual conferences. So uh, we we hope to give more of a full report to you in the near future. Um, And then this Thursday, 
as uh, Ashley mentioned, is National Day of Prayer. And uh, many of you may want to join the drive-in service. That's my plan Thursday evening. But we're going to start something brand new here. Um, I want the uh, church itself, including the sanctuary, the narthex, uh, the choir room uh, behind the hall there, every Thursday, starting National Day of Prayer this Thursday, from noon to two, to just be closed for quiet prayer. Closed for quiet prayer. And then uh, at one to two, each Thursday, Jim Pod has agreed to be our security person to be in the narthex to let folks come in and quietly either come in the sanctuary. You can go in the comfort room, the chapel back behind the room here for that hour or a few minutes and just pray quietly. I'm going to be here. Some other of our prayer leaders will be here as well. And it's just, we just want to saturate the sanctuary with prayer. We want the first hour, nobody in the sanctuary, you know, here, but uh, Miss Lisa, who's praying for the, uh, uh, the altar area and the pews, um, but nobody in the building for those two hours, unless you're coming that one o'clock to two o'clock just to pray. And that puts a priority on prayer, praying for our denomination, praying for our country, praying for personal needs. And uh, we hope that you'll join us. And so if you're looking for just a midweek time, just stop in and he'll let you in the door. You know, it's very secure and safe. You can come sit in here or somewhere in the building uh, by yourself and just pray to the Lord. Can we all say amen? I think it's going to be a beautiful uh, time of prayer. I'm going to ask now, Bobby, if you will come and Lori will play behind him as he leads us in prayer. And just uh, remember again that any of the prayer needs we have on Sunday, and if you have a prayer card, drop it in the offering plate before you leave, and it'll go on our email prayer chain. Brother Bobby? Thank you, Pastor. Good morning to all of you. Hey, welcome all of you once again uh, to be where we are. We're blessed to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we thank Pastor for those announcements, all of those that are on our prayer concerns that we pray for each and every Sunday, each and every week. And I always remind myself as we pray for others, there's someone praying for us. There's someone around the globe praying for their brothers and sisters in Christ. Because we know prayer changes things. The Bible tells us where two or more gathered, our Father is in the midst. And we welcome him here today. As I go to the Lord and we go to the Lord in prayer, keep those names close to you. If you want to fill in the gap, our altar is always open for someone because there's no doubt that at some point someone would stand in the gap for us. So we'll bow our heads and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Father, once again, Father, we come so humble, but Father, boldly today in your church, Father, we come seeking you. We come running. Father, we come on bending knees. Father, to your arms that are open wide. Father, to receive you unto ourselves. Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for allowing us to get up this morning, still in our right mind. Father, we still have our health, our strength, which we know it comes from you. Father, we thank you most importantly, as death knocked on some of the doors, Father, you made old death behave and allow us to come and worship together as a church, Father, together as all of your sisters and brothers, children in Christ. We set aside our differences this morning to come together because father your word says when we all not some of us but when we all get to heaven oh what a day of rejoice that will be father we looking for that day father to hear you say well done good faithful servant father those that are on our prayer concerns Father, look on Miss Irene Brew. Father, look on her right now. Father, her brother. Father, despite of what he's going through, Father, we know you have all powers in your hand. Father, where there's a little discomfort, comfort him right now. Father, where there's a little agony, Father, only you can remove it. 
Father, look on the little one that go on to heaven. Father, we know that one day there'll be no need for treatment. There'll be no need for aspirin. There'll be no need for a hospital room. Father, you said in your word that there'll be no more dying in the kingdom. Be no more sickness in the kingdom. There'll be no more lingering around, oh, in the kingdom. There'll be glory right there. Father, look on Jim this morning. Father, he's been there. He's been back. Father, he's been there, and he's been back. But, Father, kidney stones, Father, remove them right now. Father, we know you remove mountains. So what is kidney stones? Father, you've calmed the Red Sea. So what is kidney stones? Father, comfort Jim right now. Father, we thank you for Lori. Father, bless her right now. Father, we thank you for her talent, her gift. Father, she battled a little stone, but look at her. Prayer changes things. She's right in our midst. Father, we thank you for Lori right now. Father, as we pray, continue to heal, Lori, as only you can. Father, of all of us in our sanctuary right now, Father, we have our needs. Father, we have our wants, all of our concerns. You allow us so many times, Father, to cast them at your feet. Father, you don't give us what we want. Boy, you give us what we need. Father, you're right on time. You're a good, good father. Father, you've been more good to us than we've been to ourselves. And Father, we say thank you for mercy. Father, we say thank you for your grace. For, oh, Father, for your kindness. Oh, in this place. Father, look on our service today. Father, as we lift our voices unto you. Father, you say make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for the air that we breathe. Oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, we praying right now. Father, we thank you for your healing. Father, as the praise team, come. Father, we're going to continue to lift up your voice. Lift you up on high. Father, we thank you for another chance to be in your midst, to be in your presence, to be in the house of the Lord Amen. one more time. Father, we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but today we're going to say thank you for who you are. We're going to say thank you for your mercy and your grace. And may all of God's people say amen. amen. Can you say amen again? Let's rise together. The altar is open, dear friends, and our prayer leaders are here behind the altar. If you'd like them to anoint you with oil, to pray over you, just let the Holy Spirit move as we sing together unto the Lord. Worship team, lead us, please.
have to partake in a part of you. Mm. Father, your words say, take thee yes. and remember me. Yes. Amen. Oh, Father, how can we forget Amen. all that you've done for us? Thank you, Jesus. Father, you brought us this far. Yes. Oh, not to leave us. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Thank, thank you. you. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, there's no other way to see you mm. 
but to lift your name on high. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we're going to give you the praise mm. and the glory. Amen. And may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise the Lord. What a sweet spirit in our sanctuary today. Beautiful music. Worship team, thank you for drawing us close to the Lord. Let me mention at this time, and uh, we've really been praying for our uh, tech team. They do such a tremendous job. You've got Chip and Tammy and Corey back there. Let's just put our hands together. Thank you. <laughs> Brother Corey is going to be leaving uh, for the summer months. So again, we, we want you to pray if someone feels led uh, and you need to contact myself or Andy um, that you might want to help volunteer some time. Uh, those folks are just, they're there every single Sunday and it's, it becomes long. And uh, so if anybody might uh, have a heart for that kind of ministry, and that is a ministry, that's a powerful, amazing gift from God. And, and if some of you feel led that direction, uh, that's something your pastor cannot do. I, would, I, I can't even tune in the radio. I'm, I'm, I love the old days when I climbed up on top of the house and took the antenna and said, what, what channel can you get now? You know, so I am so old school, but some of you out there are not that way. And uh, so pray about that because we would love to have some more volunteers to help us out in the future. Can we say amen? amen? We also end the service today or the message, the communion message with communion. So if you did not pick up a cup, uh, I would encourage you right now to step back out into the narthex. You got a few moments here and we have the gluten-free cups as well. And if you didn't get one of the flyers, of course, you're welcome to get one of those. And uh, we just want to make sure everybody has one. Remember, again, in the Methodist tradition, communion is open to everyone, everyone. And uh, you might even want to uh, sometimes take a, a, a cup and to a neighbor or a friend. We consecrate the elements here. We have a communion steward meeting, and that way we, we take it from the church out to different families. Um, but if you have someone close to you, and you would like to share communion with them, please feel free to take one of those cups because we pray over them. The order of the church is that the pastor prays over them. We do that every Sunday, uh, and they're always up here. We have them for our communion stewards on the altar, but on communion Sunday, again, if you have somebody that you may be at home and they can't come and you'd like to serve them the sacrament, we encourage you to, to be a part. That's one of the great traditions of the Methodist Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for a beautiful worship experience here on the first Sunday of May, fifth Sunday of Easter. Lord, we just pray that you guide us now in the communion message. Uh, and then we respond. We do this as Methodists have been doing for hundreds of years. Uh, we respond with the sacrament. Taking the sacrament together has been our style uh, over the last year. And, uh, and then our worship team will close out the service for us. So guide us, Lord, as we now try to hear your word. We've experienced your word in a variety of ways. And now we want to hear your word uh, that you are spoken. Uh, Brother John read the scriptures. You've spoken to us through the Holy Scriptures. And we just want to hear it and, and let it speak to our heart. Maybe give us a word of encouragement. Somebody might need that this week, Lord. Or, or maybe just a special love. Uh, from the Lord, or maybe a direction, a direction, uh, maybe a rebuke, and all that's in the sermon this, this uh, week. So Lord, just speak to our heart as we follow our lectionary readings each week uh, to share the scriptures with our sisters and brothers. In your name we pray, amen. We titled the, the sermon today, and, and will for a couple weeks now, with questions. And the question today is, what is love? And um, we're in the month of May, we're just staying with uh, the, uh, the Apostle John, who wrote the Gospel of John. We've talked about the last, uh, actually, last couple of weeks, but also now he's written 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. So we're looking at 1st John chapter 4. We were in 1st John last week. Um, and, you know, Jesus in the New Testament described love uh, at least in three ways. There's actually other definitions in the Greek language the New Testament was written in for love. But the emphasis is on those three. And the, one of them is romantic love. And when I was thinking of that, I thought about the first time I um, got up enough courage to ask Nancy to 
my wife to go out with me. I was, uh, th- I'm three years older than Nancy. I don't know if y'all knew that or not. And so um, I was 19 and she was 16, just turned 16. And uh, so I was uh, trying to, you know, build up the courage to ask her out. She had moved into our community and that was scary times back then, you know. And, and I, I know I've told you I finally got up enough energy to ask her out, uh, you know, or ask her if she would go out with somebody like me. And she gave the nod, the yes, you know, but I didn't have enough energy then to actually ask her out. You know, I had to come back another time. I just, that just drained me. You know, I just got that. Yes. So, you know, but that's a romantic love, you know, and that's described in the, in the, the Bible. Uh, It is, it's uh, called Eros, you know, it's uh, uh, Eros love, romantic love. And then there's family love and relationship love, brothers and sisters and friends. There's nothing better than sitting with someone at the river or in your backyard, your house, Um, maybe a a restaurant here at the church, having a familial love is what it's called. You know, the uh, city of love, Philadelphia, you know, whether it is a city of love or not, that's up to them, but that's what the name means. And uh, that's in the Bible, the New Testament. And, you know, I I love that. Don't you, when you're sitting with friends, especially I'm right here at church when we're together and sisters and brothers in Christ and maybe a good cup of coffee and it doesn't hurt to have a bucket of chicken wings there in the, on the table as well. And, uh, and then agape love. We know about that very well. We hear about that almost every Sunday and we lift up almost every Sunday and maybe we should every Sunday. John three 16. Let's all say it together once again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then John explains to us some great avenues of love here in 1 John 4. And we shared it with the children. Now you learn that little chorus. Sing it with me one more time. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another. 1 John 4. Four, seven, and eight. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. You know, in all the speakers yesterday at the uh, Wesley Covenant Association, they were all fantastic. And of course, then the reports of the administrative meetings for the preceding two days that Miss Elizabeth represents our church and, and our state as well as our globe uh, in those meetings and decisions and uh, resolutions being made. Very powerful. Um, there was a, a, a special teaching in each of those speakers, and it was that as we move forward in Methodism, uh, a new movement of traditional orthodoxy, and, and it was emphasized it's really not new, it's just holding to the old, you know, and maybe revealing it in new ways, but holding to the, the basic teachings of Scripture, Old and New Testament, that it cannot be birthed out of anger and frustration and bitterness. It's got to be birthed out of love. So what a, what a great passage of scripture. I mean, we didn't pull this scripture because of that. We follow, as I've mentioned to you before, the lectionary readings that, that give us uh, every year a three-year setting of scriptures. And so I follow those, you know, throughout the scriptures. And we follow them, especially at the 11 o'clock traditional service, because we do a Psalter. There's always a Psalm to read each week. Uh, There's an Old Testament reading. There's a reading out of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. And then one out of the epistles, the other letters and writings in the New Testament, which today is 1 John 4, uh, starting with verse 7. So you have to have love. So it raises the question again, what, what is love? In this passage, it's very clear that we are called to love one another. That'll be the A of our ABCs for Holy Communion today. And thank you, worship team, for playing that first song when we opened the altar. Um, That was written by one of the dear ladies in our church. And she put the music to it, too. And I, I love the rendition and having the, the, the worship team play that, the band. That, I had not heard it quite like that. I know they played it before, but just beautiful today. Just it was wonderful and uh, just drew me into the Lord. And I hope that family is uh, able to watch this service later on today or this week. Um, with that concept of love, that we are to love one another, you know, I don't know about you, but loving God is not a problem for Eddie Fulford. (laughs) It's loving another. (laughs) It's loving those that are not lovely. It's it's loving those that are different. 
It's loving those that, that look at me and, they just, you know, they just, you know, what do you stand for? What do you believe in? You know, and, um, you know, loving when you're going to the polls and you're about to vote and there's those that disagree with you. Loving, you know, um, and then I thought of the passage, the Old Testament, you're very familiar, um, Jonah and the big fish, but his struggle was with the Ninevites, if you remember, how many of you have Ninevites in your life? Amen. I mean, come on, you're in church. You know, God have mercy on you. You all have your hand up in the air, you know. You know that, yeah, some of you, I know you're perfect. I know, I know, I know very much. Well, we all have, all probably have Ninevites in our life. Remember, Jonah didn't want to minister to them. He had no, the problem was not with God. The problem was not with the fish. Did you know that the fish saved his life? Did you ever think about it that way? You know, he would have drowned in that, that, that sea. He would have. It was terrible. He would have drowned. There's no way you could swim in that kind of uh, sea because of the tumult that was taking place. The fish actually saved his life. That's, that's an interesting spin on that, is it not? And, and you're probably saying, I'd rather have died if a big fish coming after me, you know. And, but he goes and he doesn't want to speak to those people. He doesn't want to give them a chance. He doesn't want to tell them that God forgives if they will repent. He doesn't want that because he doesn't like them. He doesn't like them and he's being honest about it. And if you're honest, there's probably people you don't like or get along with, okay? And we've got to get rid of that, that emotion that, that uh, ends up making us do things that we shouldn't do. And for me, all I know to do is keep putting it at the foot of the cross, but, but God gave me a new avenue this week I want to share with you. I, I love old John Wayne movies. I know that you've heard that and you're probably tired of me mentioning that, but I watch them over and over and uh, Sam Rankin's one that just, he'll just give me some other videos of old John Wayne movies. I love them. And, um, and then you can pick them up on some of the uh, uh, streaming services as well. And I was watching his last one that he made about an old gunslinger. It's called The Shootist. And he was, uh, he was dying in the movie. And literally, and when he made the movie, he was dying. And it also starred uh, Ron Howard. Remember Opie Taylor? And uh, one of the last movies I remember seeing uh, Ron Howard in, he's directed and produced a million others since then. And, um, but he played in that one. And, uh, and then Jimmy Stewart was in that too. You know, and Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne had hooked together earlier on in The Man Who Shot Liberty. Ballots. Those of you that are John Wayne movies, you know, and so uh, just, just, uh, it was a great, and he was the doctor. And so at the end of this movie, um, John Wayne is having to fight these three bad guys, and, uh, and he wins, you know, and uh, so, but in that process, the guy behind the bar, he's in a saloon, pulls out a shotgun and shoots him in the back. It's one of the few movies, and I don't want to give you a spoiler, you know, but I mean, the movie's a thousand years old, so you should have seen it by now. But uh, this is one of the few movies that John Wayne actually dies, you know, but he's laying there on the ground and, and uh, Ron Howard is playing this character that's gotten very close to him. And, uh, but he's a famous gunslinger. And so whoever finally kills him is going to be famous. And Ron Howard comes in and he, he stops the man that was shooting him in the back from shooting again. And then Ron Howard looks at him and then the music changes. And he's looking at John Wayne laying there about to die. And he's got a pistol in his hand. Thinking, you know, Hollywood is good about this part, you know. Hollywood's not good in a lot of areas, but they're good about this, you know. Given the music changes, you know, if I shoot him then I'll be famous, you know? And so he's got the gun. John Wayne's just looking up at him there like that, you know? And, and he's, and it's, it's, it's like the clock is going tick, 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 you know, what is he going to do? And then he takes the gun and just throws it like that. And, uh, John Wayne looks at him and just kind of gives a nod like only the Duke can, you know, wouldn't it be great to all of us be able to be in control that way when we leave this world? He just kind of nods at him and then just kind of falls over just like that, you know? And, uh, and then the boy walks out, you know, and he, he, he made a decision. His decision was to throw away what was just about to kill him. And so that's our first challenge of communion this week. Is there something in your life you just got to throw away from it. You just got to throw away, run away from it, whatever it is. You just, you just got to get out of there. And maybe you just got to take it and toss it away like that gun that Ron Howard did. 
You see, that's the way the Lord has spoken to me about trying to deal with, with issues sometimes that I don't get along with. You know, I, I have a tendency, it's part of Eddie's nature to say, I just want to, I just, I want to make this right. I want to fix this. I want to, you know, come back here one more time. Do you remember when Jesus was with the man and, and uh, the rich young ruler and, and he said, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus begins to share with him. Uh, and then he tells him that man to go sell all he has. He's talking just for that man now. Doesn't mean all of us necessarily, but that man, because his life was full of greed. He said, sell all you have, come follow me. In that process, the man walks away and Jesus then turned and teaches his disciples. Do you remember that story? If I was Jesus, I would have run after that man. You know, I would have said, wait a minute. You just didn't understand. I mean, I can't believe you refused me. You know, you just misunderstood. You didn't, I mean, I said, you need to sell all you have. But, you know, I mean, sure enough, you have enough for a chicken leg. You know, I mean, I, I didn't mean everything. You know, just, you see what I mean? That's, that's my nature. And that, it can kill somebody, that, 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 that nature. That's not of God. I mean, I can convince myself that that's God. I can say, well, that's just God's sweet spirit in me. But it's not. That's, that's not me. Being a Christian does not mean being nice. That's, that's not a definition of Christianity. It is to the world, but don't let the world define you. You let the Bible define you. Amen? Let the Bible. You ought to clap about that. I thought that's pretty good because I didn't come up with that. That come from God. Let God's word define you, not the world. The world is telling you what a Christian should do. Baloney on the world. You are a child of the king. Amen? Amen. Now, the B of our ABCs gives us another way of dealing with these issues. It says that we are to love one another because God is love. Because God is love. That's just who he is. That's just who he is. You know, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Matthew 10, 28 says, I'll tell you, O man, who to fear. This is Jesus' words. I'll tell you, O man, who to fear. Jesus' words. Fear the one who can destroy your soul in heaven or hell. He's in control. He said there should be fear, but in the midst of that, you know, in the midst of all of that, dear friends, God is love. You know, we just shared John 3, 16. That's who he is, you know. He cannot deny his holiness and his righteousness, but from that comes his amazing love. That's why he lays down his own life. Nobody is worthy but him. So what does he do? He could have just said, I just had it with this world. No, he gives himself, his son, and he gives his life for you and me. That is, that's beyond love. That's amazing. Just, we don't know the words for that. And that motivates us when that comes inside. That motivates us to, to be able to do things that maybe we couldn't do before. He'll not ask you to do something that you can't do. Okay? I mean, it really, you know, and there's no temptation will come upon your life that God will not always provide a way out. You know, there's some folks struggling with issues and they're just saying, I just, I, you know, there's just no other way. That's just not true. Not because of your feelings, not because of your situation, but because the word of God says that God will provide a way out. Think about Esther in the Old Testament. She had to make a strong stand because God is love and God wanted to save his people. And, and God was asking her to lay down her life, lay down her life. Are we willing to lay down our lives for others? I remember seeing another movie about an individual at the end of the movie. They were saving a, a, a community. And in this movie, you know, they all kind of got to the other side. And then a mother screamed. She said her child was not with her. And this man turns around and looks and, and her boy is still stuck over there. So he, he knows what that may mean. And he runs over there and he grabs the boy and he's trying to get to safety. And in is coming the bad guys and they're shooting and there's no way he can get back. They're coming in between. So he takes the little boy and he just turns and holds the boy, ready to take the brunt of and sacrifice himself and sacrifice himself. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times like a mother hen, I wanted to take you under my wings. You know, sometimes you can't run away from the problem. The problem is goes to work with you every day. You can't, you can't run away. You can't throw it away. It's a family member. It's a family member. You can't, you just can't, you know, God, it just drives me crazy. What do I do then? Well, then let the Lord hold you. Let him stand in between, in between the situation. Make sure always you have the full armor of God so that when that attack is coming, whether it's verbal, emotional, mental, or, or physical, whatever it is, that Jesus is in between. And what you need to do is have some key Bible verses to memorize. For me, it's Philippians 4.4. 4. 
And that's just a powerful statement. There's many others as well. Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, you know, and I can turn and I, I know the Lord has got a plan and he's his love for me. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, Eddie, plans to prosper you, plans to, to love you, not to harm you, but to give you a future. And if God's going to give me a future, he's going to protect me. Make sure Jesus is in between you and the problem. Sometimes Jesus is behind us. And it's wrong. And we just, you know, and then, and then we say, God, I'm so sorry I did that. Forgive me for my sins, you know. Make sure Jesus in the morning. you got to start off with Jesus being in charge. Start off with Jesus being in charge. And then C, and this came from the last speaker yesterday at the Global Assembly, the C of our ABCs, it says that we are, in this passage John read to us, that we are the extension of God's grace that we are his hands and feet, that we are his completion. We complete him. Jesus breathed on us the Holy Spirit. We spoke on that a few weeks back. Breathed on us the Holy Spirit to reach out to others, you know, to, to, to teach forgiveness and love and kindness and, and the grace of God. We are that completion. We fulfill the gospel. Jesus is on the right hand of God, ever interceding for you and me, so that you and I might be his righteousness, that we might be living the life that he wants us to live for others, sacrificing ourselves, making sure he's in between us, throwing away the struggles and sins that we can throw away. All of these things, the power of God is upon us, dear friends. We are his completion, the fulfillment. And the word for that is shalom. I did not know that till yesterday. I've heard many definitions of shalom where we give peace to one another. You know, uh, you give a holy hug or a holy kiss or, or you embrace somebody by your prayers, you know, shalom. And, and it's a farewell and it's a greeting and just it's the peace of God to be with you. But it means completion. We are the completion of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. So what do we do about that? What do we do about that? I want you to look in your bulletin if you will, and look at the Bible verse. This comes to us from Miss Carol Stroop, and we're going to have a different one every single week. It's right there under the Let's Pray. If you'll drop down, it's in a box. Um, Miss Debbie puts this together for us, our secretary in the office. It says, uh, a soft, say it with me, would you? You all have it. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stir up anger. Maybe that should be the verse that the Lord wants you to have this week because he already knows what you're going to face. And if you memorize that verse, what it will do for you, the thought for the day, this is interesting as well. This comes from Adele. I don't know if she's here with us today, but Adele has a gift of writing and she wrote this. Let me just read this and just listen to this. God always gives warnings about the electric fences in our lives so that we won't get hurt. I love that. Yeah, that makes you kind of think. You know, if you've ever stepped or bumped into an electric fence, it should take one time. For me, it took two, but, <laughs> but it should just take one time. It should just take one time. You know, there are electric fences out there. God has put some areas in our life where his word is, no, you don't go there. You don't get close there. No. I mean, there are signs. And you're saying, well, I just don't see any. It doesn't mean they're not there. Not, but you can pray, Lord, help me to see your signs. But those, the electric fences are out there to protect you. Parameters, the word to protect us, not to fall by the wayside. It's, 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 it's not written by an ogre. It's written by a God of love. It's a love letter for all of us. Amen? For all of us. Let's pray. Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you for all that are gathered here our communion Sunday is always so precious for it reminds us of who we are as children of the King. Lord, we just ask that you guide us as we share the uh, creed, one of the ancient creeds of our faith, uh, that we believe in the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, and that we have the opportunity to ask that you forgive us of our sins. Forgive us right now of our sins. Even the great Peter Jesus said, I must wash your feet. You are clean, but your feet are dirty. You know, your feet are dirty. And in this day and age, it'd be our hands, right? I mean, we've lived through a year of washing our hands way too much, probably. You know, but it, it's with the hands is what gets dirty. So Jesus would say today, your hands are what gets dirty. So I've come to cleanse your hands. 
you know? And so we're asking him right now to cleanse us, our hands. What, what, where have we gotten dirty? Even today, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In your name we pray, amen. Do we have the creed, Chip and Corey, that we could put up on the screen? Do we have that? I'm not sure if we have it. If not, we'll use the hymnal. Just say yay or nay if you have it or not. It's on 881 in your hymn books. Remember, those are out there for you. I'd like us, I just feel led that we need to share that today. Let's just use the hymn books then, if you will. 881. Just remain seated. This is what we believe in. Um, so let's share this together. Hold, just hold, let's just hold the creed since we've already got the hymn books. Let's just read together. Okay. Cause that goes with three questions and this is just the straight out reading. Let's read together. I believe in God, the father almighty maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is what we believe. This is just the ancient creed that was written so long ago that kind of gave a synopsis of our early Christian faith. And it's good to share those words as we partake of the sacrament. I'm going to ask that you take the chalice that you have with you. Hopefully everybody has one. If you have the gluten-free, the bread is in the bottom. Uh, If you have the others, the bread is at the top. There's two layers of plastic for the others. The Bible says on the night before Christ was crucified, he took, he took the bread. He broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. So pull out the bread, take and eat. And remember me. After supper, and we learned this on Monday, Thursday and Good Friday of the Seder meal that our drama team shared with us. There's different cups that are used during the communion service, but the cup after the meal is the cup of redemption. So symbolical of Jesus. So he took that cup and he said, take and drink. This represents my life, my blood, a new covenant to be poured out for you. May everyone drink together. Let us bow our heads. Can you share with me the Lord's most holy prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to ask the worship team and band to go ahead and make their way forward to close out our service today. I want to share just a word with you before we uh, have our closing. We were so blessed. We had most of our administrators uh, with us in the simulcast yesterday. And you hear us off and on report uh, information, uh, what's taken place in the global Methodist church. And, and you can pick up a lot of that information on your own, of course. Um, but I want you to know that, uh, we are run by committees in our church. We all know that. So, uh, we will be meeting with some of the heads of the committees from our task force, uh, to our board of directors and probably, um, in the near future, we had planned for this anyway, but probably now more than ever, we will be pulling together a board meeting of, of the whole church that you can just sit in and we can kind of give you a report. Many of you may not be up to date just where Methodism is at the present time, um, but we want to do that and uh, answer any questions and then just kind of get a feeling from the church, the direction um, with all the information then that you receive that you would like us 
to go with. And um, we'll share a lot of the information we received from the last couple of days from the Global Assembly as well. I just know the Lord is in control and that we need to be continually in the business of uh, building the kingdom, our theme, and everything that we do. So we don't need to hesitate. We don't need to stop. We just need to move forward. And, uh, and then as, as things come our way, we just we take care of them as they come our way, and we just move forward uh, in the presence of the Lord. We stand firm, and we just, we, we've been standing for a couple of years, but I think it's time we move forward. We stand, and we move forward, and we, anything we need to do, we're just, we're going to do it, and the Lord will provide, and I, I just know we're in good hands. Amen? Amen. 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 So you'll hear more about that in the next couple of weeks. Let's stand together. Once again, the altar's always open. We'll sing Cornerstone. Uh, just let the Holy Spirit uh, bless you and guide you. Let me go ahead as you're standing and say this so that Bobby can lead us in our closing prayer right afterward. We have the prayer bears out there. We mention this each week. We have the prayer wall. You can put a personal prayer request. There's one new prayer quilt. I signed it earlier this week. Please stop by and uh, offer that. And if you have your own prayer requests, drop them in the offering plates uh, as you leave with your offering. Those online, you can continue to, to uh, send in your prayer requests or to email them with your checks uh, as well. Just praise the Lord. That's wonderful that you're blessing us, and we hope that we continue to be a blessing to all of you. Amen. Amen. Jesus blood and righteousness. 
thank you for Christ alone. Father, you're our cornerstone. Father, you're like a tree planted by the water. Thou shall not be removed. Father, as we come to the close of this service, Father, help us to put on the whole armor of God. Father, that they will see a lot less of us and more of you. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor and wave. We'll see you next Sunday morning, Mother's Day. Hey, Ron.